you know, like a light switch, their life was changed in an instant. It, it ranges from car wrecks to the, the most simple things, slipping on their floor and taking one bad step. Showing people that there's still life after an injury. And, uh, you know, life is what you make of it. Spinal cord injuries are among the most deadly and challenging for survivors and their families. According to the National Spinal Cord Injury Statistical Center, as many as 368,000 people in the United States are living with spinal cord injuries, and some 17,800 new cases occur every year. According to the Brain Injury Association of America, there are more than 5.3 million adults and children in the U.S. living with a permanent brain injury-related disability. That's one in every 60 people. In this edition of Making a Difference, you'll hear about an organization that restores hope and so much more to survivors of spinal cord and traumatic brain injuries and their families. That organization, Triumph Over Tragedy. I had a normal, you know, childhood, um, two great parents, a uh, brother, a uh, dog, the whole nine yards, and we were real active as kids, loved to ride motorcycles, play sports, and all that good stuff, and we had moved out to Conyers, and there was some undeveloped land behind our house, several hundred acres, and so we would build tree houses and all that good stuff, had motorcycle tracks and all, and um, we had put a tree house up with two stories, and originally we'd put a, a rope and a pulley down pretty low. You'd have to bend your knees to go down the little zip line. And some older kids had, had put it up about 20 feet. And so Reggie and I went down there one day and, and I decided to be the adventurous one or crazy one, however you want to say it. And I uh, climbed up and went down the first time, no problem. My mom had a cowbell that she would ring because we were so far back in the, the woods. And we knew that when we heard that bell, it was time to go home immediately or we'd face consequences. Um, so we heard the bell go off and Wes is like, you know, I want to try it one more time. And he went up and, um, and went off. And, and it's not really the only time it's ever happened to me in my life. Everything went into slow motion, just like a movie. And he stepped off and the rope uh, broke and um, slung forward. And he fell upside down about 20 feet and landed on his head and left shoulder. Uh, and immediately uh, when he hit the ground, everything came back into real time. And I was standing about 15 feet from him. And, um, you know, just to experience that, you know, as a kid, being 13 at the time, uh, he was nine, um, you know, our, our life was changed forever you know, in a split second. It was, it was tough, you know, not only on me, but on my family as well. Um, for the first time in my life, I was separated from my family, you know, being taken by an um, ambulance and helicopter and uh, up to Eggleston Children's Hospital. And so our, our whole family, our whole world, was turned around on that day, April 9th, 1987. You know, I really, I'm a big believer that God pays our steps. And uh, I was always a class clown screwing around in school and not really paying attention at that age. And uh, two weeks prior, um, our coach at school had taught us uh, a health class and taught us what to do if we, um, you know, encounter someone that falls, uh, not to move them, not to pick them up, uh, to stabilize their neck. Um, you know, so, you know, each of those details were running through my mind. and. We sent the other two boys that were with us back to get my mom and dad and, and to call 911 and, uh, you know, stayed with him and the, he kept consciousness the whole time. And, um, you know, he all he could worry about was us getting into trouble uh, with the bell ringing and us not going back, you know, home on time. And he kept apologizing. And then, you know, he said that he couldn't feel from the chin down. Uh, his neck was burning. Um, all of the things that the, the coach at that time had taught us, um, you know, the signs of a broken neck or a broken back were coming to life right before us. Well, I spent about six months in, um, between Eggleston and Shepherd Center. And my parents moved in, you know, the night that I, that I got hurt. And Reggie finished up school, and then he moved in as well. You know, we stayed together as a family. That We knew that was really, really important. So after six months in the hospital, came home. And in a lot of ways, that was harder for me coming home because I was back to where where I was, you know, my motorcycle is still leaned up against the uh, the wall in the garage. My bicycle is still left in the yard. And so, you know, then when I came home, it hit me that my life was different from now on. Uh, my room had been upstairs. And so to, 
to go to my room, my brother, or my mom, or my dad would have to carry me upstairs. Um, you know, my chair wouldn't fit in the bathroom. You know, my whole world had, had changed. He was worried more about his family than he was himself, uh, and the same goes for me. I was worried more about, uh, is Wes going to be okay? Is he going to walk again? Will he survive this accident? Um, you know, watching my mom and dad be upset and, and not knowing the future. Um, and what a lot of people don't think about with these type of injuries is the enormous financial expense that comes with it. You know, we were real fortunate. Not only did I have a great family, I had a great church family and friends that um, they're the first ones there to, um, you know, help redo our house, to put a, a sidewalk around the back uh, yard and, and things like that. So it really took a lot of people to help us get through it. Wesley Jones says he's also been blessed, blessed to create and host a nationally aired television program. It spotlights him and the sport he loves, hunting. And, you know, the idea was to be able to reach a whole lot more people and, and hopefully to inspire people that no matter what you want to do in life, as long as you, you know, work hard, you can still do it. Then tragedy struck again. Wes was filming an episode and um, tragically got ejected out of his chair uh, and then found himself, uh, really for our family, a full circle moment where we found ourselves back in the, the same place that we started in 1987. Uh, and they came to us and said, hey, we don't know that Wes is going to make it. Um, and it was touch and go for about 30 days. Uh, and, and we spent a lot of time together, um, you know, um, while Wes was on the ventilator. So I was doing a lot of the talking and it's the one time that he was doing a lot of listening because he couldn't talk back to me. But we talked about uh, being able to start a foundation formally to give back to others that face similar tragedies. God kind of used that as a wake up moment for me and Reggie. And we knew that when, when I got better and kind of then it was a question if I would get better, but we knew it was time to, you know, to give back and, and help other people. And so about a year after that accident, we got the foundation up and, and going and, and hasn't looked back, haven't looked back at all. And we deal with spinal cord and brain injuries because a lot of times, unfortunately, they go hand in hand together. We really tried to self-reflect and figure out what were the most impactful moments that we had as a family. And, and what we came to realize is the point of impact when you know a tragedy first happens is certainly impactful. Uh, when you go home, everything is different. Uh, and certainly if you're in a chair or you have a TBI, um, you know, things are not easy to maneuver around your house. Um, and then the third thing, um, you know, is going on a vacation. Something as simple as being able to go and unwind. Uh, if you don't have accessibility, uh, it makes it become burdensome versus a relaxation. So those are the kind of the three buckets that we focus on today. So the first thing we do is, is on the initial onset of the accident or illness. And we just kind of be there for the family, you know, going in to the hospital to let them know you know, that things do get better um, in time. And just kind of be there for them to, to ask questions to, just to talk to, you know, basically just have a friend. At the point of impact of an injury, we're often, um, you know, people are reaching out to us for, for help. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is a place like, we're fortunate enough and, and blessed here in Atlanta to have a place like the Shepherd Center that does remarkable work. Uh, there are several other facilities uh, that we work with throughout the country. Uh, but as we've started to serve families nationally, um, individuals are contacting us through social media and saying, hey, uh, my, my loved one or a friend uh, has sustained um, you know, a spinal cord injury or a traumatic brain injury. Uh, can you guys help? Um, and they are going directly to a regular hospital at the point of impact. And then they're being transferred to uh, a rehab center like Shepherd here in Atlanta. So we're helping with a wide variety of things um, that you know, has to be done. Um, from everything from our great partnership with Angel Med Flight, who's flying patients for us uh, and air ambulance services, um, to coordinating with insurance, uh, making sure that they get accepted, um, through making educated decisions on which facility to choose based on you know their specific needs of their injury as well as their where they're located in the United States. And then after that, uh, it's kind of become the the biggest part of the foundation is going into these people's houses and converting their home and make it accessible for the for the person that, that's hurt or sick. And that includes everything from, you know, widening doorways, putting in ramps, 
uh, putting in lifts in the ceiling, um, bathrooms that are more convenient. Our house was the same as it was when, when he got hurt. Uh, and almost 10 months later, um, you know, we, we didn't have ramps, we didn't have lifts, we didn't have uh, doorways that his wheelchair could fit through. Um, it, it was extremely impactful to us. So um, that was also one of the, the things that we felt like we would focus on as an organization is to make that transition back home as easy as possible. Uh, so we've been very fortunate to have partnerships with uh, the Home Depot, the Lowe's, the Ace Hardware's, uh, the Mohawks of the world that are you know, providing a lot of the materials that it takes because it's enormously expensive uh, when you start modifying homes. Um, you know, if they have not been, uh, you know, built, most of them are not, um, to um, adapt to a chair or to someone with a walker or a cane, uh, we're trying to normalize that process as much as possible. And then finally after that, uh, we send a lot of of these families on a, on a vacation, all expenses paid to so some different properties that we're hooked up with. You know, obviously, someone that sustained a spinal cord or brain injury, it, it, it's obvious to see what they're physically facing. Um, I think a lot of times people don't see what they're mentally and spiritually facing. And I think, you know, a, a vacation uh, to just unwind, even if it's for a week, and to kind of take your mind off things, but you know, when we first came home back in 1987, about um, probably four or five years after the initial accident, we decided we would try to take a vacation. We went to uh, Florida, and um, you know, they said on the website as well as verbally that it was handicapped uh, accessible. Uh, we get there, and there was a 19-inch curb uh, getting into the condo. Um, the doorways were not wide enough, um, and we had to turn around and go all the way back home. And so, you know, as a kid, you know. That certainly was disappointing because our, our beach vacation lasted 24 hours. And so we saw that as a need to be able to give back in a small way to allow someone, uh, and really as a family, to be able to go and unwind and not have to worry about, you know, is a place adapted, um, you know, can I afford to go to a restaurant and buy a meal? Uh, all those things are taken care of uh, when we sponsor a family. Sports for just about everything I did, you know, between wrestling and baseball, that, that about took up the whole year. Remember, it was the third match of the day. I wasn't the one to shoot on people. I wasn't very good at neutral. But um, I went to shoot, and that's, I guess, when I slipped and landed wrong. So when we first started um, and really had just formalized um, our 501c3 10 years ago, uh, we got a call um, that a young man had sustained a spinal cord injury in a wrestling match. Proximity happened to be very close to us in Covington, Georgia. So we, uh, we reached out to the family and visited with them and Shepard and, um, and realized pretty quickly uh, that they were going to need some help with their home. And so, uh, you know, we went to the head's home and inspected it. and. To be honest with you, we had not taken up a dime um, you know, from the public, and this was gonna be a pretty expensive undertaking, but we really felt like uh, God was leading us to this family and, and that we needed to help them. That was probably sometime in January when I realized Tyler was definitely gonna come home in a wheelchair. I could sort of see the storm clouds in the horizon, so to speak, that man, I've got all this stuff we've got to get done at the house, and I had no idea how to do it. Didn't know where to start. So Wes and I made the decision that even if we had to write a personal check to take care of this, uh, we would. And, and it was just amazing to watch the community come together along with the corporations and many of them that are partnering with us today and, and step up. And we literally did not have to uh, spend a dime out of our own pocket. And um, you, you know that's probably been, uh, even still today, out of the hundreds of families that we've served, um, they're just the most appreciative and trusting family that I've probably ever dealt with. They literally gave us a key to their home. I thought it was kind of unbelievable that, you know, there are people out there that are so willing to help, you know, like the foundation is. When Reggie come to me and started telling me what they were willing to do, I couldn't believe it. They were at Shepherd. Um, they met us there for the initial meeting. Uh, they told us what they felt like they needed, and they said, you know, you guys do whatever you feel you need to do, including picking out the wallpaper, uh, the color of the floor, um, you know, just unbelievable trust, um, but the appreciation that they still have today. Uh, Tyler is still 
um, you know, doing extremely well. He's confined to a chair and, uh, and working for a local police department as a 911 dispatcher, so I couldn't be more proud of him. Even two or three weeks into the accident, you, you're just, you still can't even believe it's going on, but you have no idea what the future is. We've had, uh, you know, a tremendous amount of individuals that we, um, you know, have served uh, that have become very, very close to the foundation and us as a family. Uh, I think about J.C. Beth Thomas, uh, who sustained a, a brain injury. Uh, she actually got hit by a train at 17 years of age. Triumph over tragedy actually arranged for the flight from Jacksonville to Shepherd to arrange for us to be, get two Shepherds. They actually paid the flight bill till our insurance paid it, even though we was approved before we left, the bill come, they paid the bill, our insurance company reimbursed them. I don't know what we would have done, you know, otherwise. Been here from the day we landed, uh, at least five or six days a week, every week, every day. Uh, just financial support, taking us to eat, uh, mom and daddy come praying with us, just every way that you can imagine, that's why they've, they've been there. And, and even, you know, they're working on our house, uh, overseeing all that, that all that gets done and prepared for us. She's back, uh, she barrel races. Uh, my daughter is a professional rodeo athlete, uh, and so she, uh, you know, barrel raced with her as, as kids. Uh, but she's back on her horse today and, and still has, you know, a long road ahead of her. But it's people like that that really inspire me and not every story, uh, unfortunately, turns out that way. Uh, you know, we've had so many, uh, the kids, you know, definitely get to me uh, and they bother me. And, and that's what a lot of people don't realize in nonprofit work, when you're serving others and you're really giving your heart to those other individuals, uh, you know, we all have our own challenges and, and problems that we, uh, you know, face, um, but, you know, those individuals keep me up at night. You know, so if I could wave a magic wand and, and, and you know, have no family ever have to face what we've faced, uh, I would do that. If I was, you know, granted a wish, uh, you know, that would probably be my wish. Yeah, we'd love to see the, the organization keep growing and what we'd like to do in the future, we're currently starting a fundraising campaign for, is we want to build a, a retreat and an event center and we're going to have some accessible cabins that uh, families could come in and use and then when they're not using them, we're going to take the event center and, and do different things like weddings and um, concerts and you know that'll help generate money so it can be self-sustaining for years to come. You know at 13 um, you know having something like this happen to uh, not only your brother but your best friend and we were inseparable it's kids and we still are today um, and again I, you know for me changing the trajectory of my life um, you know I'm really thankful uh, that we were able to stick together as a family unit. So many individuals that face these type of tragedies uh, break up as families. Uh, divorce rate, um, you know, is extremely high, not only in the general public, but especially in these type of injuries. Uh, and to be quite honest, you know, the average individual that breaks his or her neck, um, you know, their life expectancy is an average of seven years. So, you know, Wes is, is way past um, what the average is. He's always been above average anything that he's ever tried to do. Um, but, you know, we're thankful to still have him here with us, inspiring others. You know, after my first accident, I, it's probably a month in, I'd gotten really sick. I'd been on a ventilator, my lung had collapsed, and my health was just not good. And, you know, I, I remember telling my parents that if this was the way my life was going to be, I wish God would just go ahead and take me. You know, of course, it upset them, you know, and their nine year old kid saying something like that. And it was just like a light switch. And, had flicked and you know I knew that my life was going to be different but I could still have a good good life and a good future and so I you know I'm not saying that there's days I don't get down and and stuff like that but from that day I you know I made myself a promise that I would never quit at whatever I did and um, although sometimes it gets hard you know I still live to that motto even today. You know, I'm often asked, um, you know, what would be uh, the advice I could give to a family that it faces this type of tragedy in their life? And, and it's oftentimes not the answer that they want to hear, but I think the preparation for something like this um, is really prior to uh, the tragedy. My, my parents have been 
been amazing to my brother and I. And I think the the greatest thing they ever instilled in us is a, a sense of faith. Um, you know, we were lucky enough to grow up in church and it was just something that was normal to us. So without that faith in, in God that they instilled in us in an early age, um, I honestly believe I wouldn't be sitting here today. You know, we were fortunate enough to grow up in a home where our faith was put, you know, in a very high priority in our life. Uh, our family was very important to us. So I think that the work starts today. Not that you should live in fear that, well, what if this happens to me? Uh, but I certainly uh, believe that our days are numbered on earth and what we do with those days uh, really counts. When an accident or illness, you know, like this happens, um, it really, it takes everyone to, to pitch in, you know, Community is, is so important. Um, getting volunteers to help equip the houses and, and things like that. And, you know, it's, it's you see a lot of times the, the individuals that have a closer family, they seem to, you know, respond better. They, um, they over, overcome things a little quicker, if that makes sense. Um, you know, it, it's so sad seeing People laying in the hospital that, that doesn't have anyone, and that makes it makes it a whole lot tougher, um, especially for them. You know, a lot of a lot of times they'll end up in a nursing home, and if they had someone there to help, it uh, you know they would be at home and, and thriving in life. Um, and I think a lot of times people are there in the beginning to to help and and want to help, and then it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. You know. The newness wears off and, and you know, people get home and, you know, they, they think, well, I went over there and helped put a ramp in, you know, they're fine. They don't need anything else. And just for an individual, having a, a neighbor, family, or friend check in, I think goes a lot, you know, a long way to, um, to help someone. You know, you see so many things that we face as a country and in the world today, all of the turmoil, uh, whether you're Democrat, Republican, black, white, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, the way we were raised is to serve everyone. Uh, and so we really don't get into uh, a lot of the turmoil things that you see in the world today. Um, and when we go into a place like Shepherd and we're loving on or serving on a family, I could care less what they look like. I could care less who they voted for. Uh, you know, my mission as an individual in our organization is to serve them. Technology's come a long way since I first got hurt in 87. Um, you know, they told me when I got hurt, I would never be able to drive, you know, wouldn't be able to do different things. And, and along the way, um, there's several different companies now that put in equipment in vans that um, I drive like I drive my chair. You can drive a van with a joystick. So all of that kind of technology, of course, the voice applications on computers make it easier. Because you know, I'm very blessed. I got arm movement and I, I can feel all over. And, you know, when I get down in the dumps, I think about people that I saw in Shepherd. And even now when we go back and see these families where people are so much worse than I am, can't move or feel from their neck down, it, it kind of helps you, puts in check when you're having a bad day. There's always somebody out there that's worse off in a, in a worse situation. I think that um, in general, people um, are, are good deep down inside. And I think they have a willingness to help uh, they have a willingness to volunteer, to write checks, uh, to love on one another. I think the harder part is these individuals um, continue their journey, you know, whether it's a month out or two months out, um, you know, they're still dealing with their tragedy and, and oftentimes, um, you know, it's not covered in the media. So I think that if you discover someone um, that faces this type of tragedy, go and invest in their family. You know, um, I think serving others um, is it, oftentimes hard and it's painful. Um, but it's something that will make our world a better place if we just set aside the time to do it. Hi, I'm Guy Arledge, Chairman of the Board of the AIB Network. Today it gives me great pleasure to present the Spirit of Community Service Award to Reggie and Wesley Jones, who are the founders of the Triumph Over Tragedy Foundation. Thanks to you and the efforts of others in your organization, you help families weather serious illness and sudden onset of accidents and the tough things that can happen in life, helping them to get through the onset of those episodes and then adjust to life ahead. 
and to make it through every day. We're honored to help raise the awareness of your foundation. On behalf of all of us here at AIB, our sincere congratulations and best wishes for future success. Thank you so much, Guy. Yep. We really appreciate the uh, the work that AIB uh, does, and uh, taking the time to you know to set aside such a distinct honor. Uh, we've been doing this for about 10 years, and uh, Wes got hurt when we were kids in '87 and, and became a quadriplegic. Um, and we hope to share some of that uh, you know today with the story. Um, but you know to be able to, uh, to just set aside some time to come visit with you guys and uh, to have this distinct honor, we really appreciate it. We get more out of out of it than the families we help. You know, just um, you know, seeing a smile on their face after something so hard and, and being able to help and you know all the the companies that have, have worked with us and the volunteers and um, you know for God to use all those people to, to help someone it's just very very rewarding. Triumph Over Tragedy really came out of us facing a tragedy uh, as a family and really focusing more on you know the triumph of that event and, and, it, and it's not something that um, you know, ever stops. I, I think we'll continue uh, to, you know, Wes has bad days, I have bad days, we all do. Um, but I think that, um, you know, to focus on more of the triumph than you do the tragedy is the key.